at you from Siem Reap, Cambodia. Woo! <laughs> and I'm also coming back from, uh, or coming to you from the back of a Cambodian style tuk tuk. So we are heading to a floating village today and we're gonna take a tour of that and I am so freaking excited. It looks like it might rain, but I brought a poncho to protect my camera because I don't care about me, I only care about the camera. <laughs> Starting from Siem Reap, Kom Pong Fluk Floating Village is almost an hour away, but it was a fascinating ride and gave us a real inside peek into the lives of the Cambodian people here. I'm sorry about the shakiness of this footage, but as you can see, some of the roads were really rough to get down. This is a local Cambodian school. They only operate between 7 and 11 a.m. due to the heat and funds. The elementary schools always seem to be way larger than the high schools due to students dropping out to go work. I've heard that the price of this tour sometimes triples during the dry season, since there's no prices listed at the stand where you buy the tickets, which seems a bit shady, and I wouldn't say it's worth a ton of money to see, but that's up to you to judge. And since the ticket stand was pretty far from the actual village, I hope the money goes towards the locals there, but can't assure you that it does. And I wasn't able to find a source on that. If it doesn't, it's not the most ethical. So maybe just watch this video and experience it through us instead. The name of this floating village translates to the Harbor of Tusks. This village sits on a river which leads to the Tonle Sap. It's the largest freshwater lake in Southeast Asia and a huge biodiversity hotspot. We're on the boat on our way to the floating village, literally pulling out of the dock right now, and we are the only two people on this boat. <laughs> At first, I was trying to figure out what type of vegetation these bushes were when I abruptly realized that they were the tops of trees. Suddenly, the extent of the depths of the water became really apparent. I've heard of tours in other countries and places of floating villages where no one actually lived there. This village was active and definitely a real community. This may be due to the fact that tourism only hit this village about 10 years ago and is a relatively new source of income here. Most of the villagers rely on the fishing industry during the wet season and they farm during the dry season as their main ways to make money. We saw men and women weaving fishing nets, children playing in the water, people young and old bathing outside of their homes a girl rowing a boat to her friend's house, and more. We saw multiple people bathing in the waters here. It obviously plays a huge role in their lives. It was all awesome and totally fascinating to see how the people lived here. I can't express how large this village was. I was truly surprised. I couldn't really find any information about exactly how many people lived here, and sadly our guide didn't speak much English to provide any information about the village, which was a bit disappointing, but we just observed and enjoyed. We are kind of on the edge of the floating village right now, and there's a mangrove forest that you can then, for $5 each, go onto a small boat and explore in the mangroves. And because it's the wet season, we're going to be like real close to the branches of these forests. Um, yeah, it's pretty cool. The water was very brown here from all the mud and dirt getting kicked up from the rains, and also from how much clay is in the soil here. Hey Boo, smile! <laughs> Our mangrove guide was a local from the village who didn't speak any English. Being on a small boat, getting closer to the houses and the people gave us a brand new perspective, which was really exciting. It got me wondering what it would be like to teach English in their local school and live in this community.
Oh. Try to under the water. Oh. <laughs> Hello! <laughs> I was fascinated by the fact that these families still had dogs, cats, and livestock high above the water. We were really silly and forgot bug spray. I really recommend not forgetting bug spray. Hey, this is Daniel from Barcelona and Hello. we <laughs> <laughs> so I told him he can be in my video, and now we're gonna go check out some crocodiles. <laughs> the crocodile farm was located right next to the shop that sold purses, belts, and other things made from the skins of said crocodiles, which was a bit upsetting to me. Also, they allowed you to hold the babies, which I'm never a fan of. Babies should be with their mamas, and not held by strangers being exposed to all sorts of new and exotic bacteria and germs and things like that. Our guide brought us down the river and out to see the lake. There was also a local temple we were able to visit too. The mangrove forest and the temple were the only two stops our boat made. At the temple was a few stray dogs and some monks. The details in the architecture and the colors within the murals were so beautiful. We're coming back now. I'm in the back of the Tuk Tuk uh, waiting for Joe. He's just grabbing a coffee at this local little restaurant. Um, so I wanted to say I loved the floating village. Um, I definitely think it's worth it and I would definitely recommend going. Um, they, the, the mangrove thing that we did, I personally would not recommend that you do it. Um, I want to be totally honest with you guys all the time and I want to give you like a real opinion on everything. And they stop you to try to sell either you something. Uh, they start off saying, would you like anything and then if you don't want anything they say can you buy something for the kids either food or school supplies that they say goes to the kids in the village and then if you say no to that then they say will you buy your um, boat person the guide something and then he or she will actually say oh I really like these or I really like these and I, I understand why they do that you know tourism here is such a huge industry and how most people make their livings but it does put you in a bit of an uncomfortable situation in most scenarios that money will never actually go to the kids but they almost made it seem like we were stuck in that boat there until we bought something so we ended up buying these bananas for two freaking dollars, which was way overpriced. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit that like button, leave a comment below to chat with me on what you thought of this place, and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye. <laughs> He's so cute.